India goes through one of its worst times to handle the COVID crisis. It's not a time to ponder what's gone wrong and what's missing and crying and howling about it. It's time to fight the virus, to figure out what's missing and to make sure that it gets delivered to people. The world stands with India in its fight against the virus. We as journalists have a role to play. We can help identify gaps and make authorities and people aware. It's our job. It's not time to point fingers at political parties, journalists in bed with people who have not done their jobs. You are not doing your duty. Let me assure you, history will look at you not so kindly. By not informing where things are missing and what's wrong, you are not doing your job. But anyways, let's not get into that. What we want to discuss today is a very important issue. Now, the knowledge base around COVID and how to handle and fight, it is something that is not an easy one. Specialists are there. We do not see a standardized toolkit of people who have led the fight against COVID available to doctors around India, accessible on a platform which is open. I don't understand why not. Anyways, we have a very important issue to deal with. A lot of doctors are prescribing steroids at very early stages of the disease, and that is actually making India lose its fight against COVID virus. Now, Dr. S. Vincent Rajkumar is joining us from the United States. He's a hematologist, internist, and an oncologist based in Mayo Clinic, United States. India has a young population. It can fight the COVID. The young people don't need to lose the war against the COVID. Dr. Rajkumar, what made you write about you know, the use of steroids, you know, the early use of steroids in COVID-19. Can you explain why, why did you write about it? Hi, thank you so much uh, for having me. Um, I uh, have been involved with uh, helping physicians and patients in India deal with the current COVID crisis. Uh, many people have reached out to me on Twitter, through WhatsApp messages, through family members who are still in India asking for advice. Uh, my wife is also an infectious disease physician and uh, also at the Mayo Clinic, and she has also been taking care of a number of patients and uh, counseling physicians on management of COVID. We see it all the time, whether directly or through social media, that patients are being prescribed corticosteroids very early, at high doses, and often for too long. And these can be not just you know benign, and not just something that's useless but can actually be harmful and it basically goes to the fundamental aspects of why we need steroids for covid and when we need steroids for covid so what you're saying doc is that these steroids are being prescribed too early there are too many cases and how they actually work against covid rather than help the fight of, of the of the people Yes. So people need to understand steroids are not antivirals. They don't kill the virus. They don't suppress the virus from dividing. They actually suppress the immune system from fighting the virus. So in the first week of the illness, when we are exposed to COVID, we need all the help we need from the immune system. That is not the time to suppress the immune system. So when steroids are used early, it causes problems. During about the second week, when people get short of breath or lung involvement, which is easily detected by hypoxia, low oxygen in the blood, uh, by a pulse oximeter, that's when steroids are used. And what it does at that point is, by then, the body has already controlled the virus. And in fact, the lung involvement and the lung damage, to some extent, are from a very aggressive immune response. So there we are trying to slow down the immune response so we can limit the lung damage. And so there we use judicious amount of steroids for five days at a judicious dose. And in that setting, it really helps. And this was proved by the randomized control trial called the recovery trial. In that trial, they showed that when you give it early to patients who are not yet hypoxic, there was already, there was a trend to more harm. The second problem is continuing the steroids too long or too high a dose would mean that you're going to suppress the immune system for too much of a time and then you get secondary bacterial infections. You know, one of the main reasons for death in India now probably is secondary bacterial infections that occur when the patient's already in the hospital. And there's too many drug-resistant bacteria, drug-resistant candida, which is a fungus, and now mucor 
which is a black which is also called the black fungus these all can take root when your body's immune system is suppressed sure so my warning is this is like a double edged sword you want to use it carefully if it used carefully it saves lives and there's clear guidelines on when to use it how much and for how long if you stick to that you will save lives you err on either giving it too early or for too long or too high a dose then you risk lives so doc uh, i get your point there now what i don't understand is why isn't there like an open source centralized well advertised toolkit as the virus moves to rural india where doctors may not have the experience of dealing with covid right now until now and now they will have to begin dealing with it why isn't there like a proper open toolkit uh, you know video toolkit in fact which explains all of these stages uh, properly to the doctors excellent question and you know i have been in the business of writing guidelines for cancer therapy and i've also been um doing you know articles and editorials i know the difference part of the problem is when i was able to do this thread because it's just me i don't have to convince anyone else this is what i feel when you have multiple states and multiple leaders and multiple doctors involved it's very hard to find consensus so each person has their own favorite approach somebody wants ivermectin somebody else wants remdesivir somebody wants plasma somebody wants favipropyr somebody wants to give steroids at a higher dose then you find the consensus and the consensus eventually becomes the lowest common denominator that everybody can agree with so i think that's part of the problem is like when you have many many competing interests involved you end up with guidelines which seem like you know trying to appease every everybody who's who's uh, who's got a you know a, a, a view on it so i think um having very restricted group of people who are really have thought about it with no conflicts of interest giving in guidance is better so i think that's why you see states like tamil nadu where there's only one state and a new government starting fresh can issue a guidelines very precise they don't have to please anyone and so uh, i think it's just the nature of the problem this is not unique to india it's happened in the us where yeah. you know different places sure. have different sure. guidelines and rules um it'll be nice though at this point for india to have a national guidelines on this these are the basic elements that we all agree on and these are things that are you know useless but not harmful and then these are the things that are actually harmful and you you are better off avoiding them so what the doctor is referring to is the toolkit that the tamil nadu government put out is you know kind of sets out what what stage what's going wrong with it where are the issues uh, how do you tackle them whether it's at home or at first stage in hospital or in an advanced stage in hospital and the stages in it so i think it's pretty precise now what the doctor is recommending is a central guidance booklet almost on the website accessible centralized when the doctor says people without conflict of interest must be putting this uh, booklet or this guidance together what he's talking about is you know the misguidance on the use of drugs which are useless drugs sometimes which are prescribed i'm not going to get into it because there's a tremendous amount of conflict of interest happening there and that guidance must be clear dr vincent rajkumar thank you very much for joining me for this and i appreciate what you're telling us about and thank you for your guidance on uh, the steroids we'll come back to you as the story develops thank you so much for having me